Good afternoon, I'm David Baer, Chairman of the TDC, and I call the meeting to order. Uh, thank you for, uh, welcome to everyone for being here, uh, council members and staff. Um, I would like to thank everybody for their commitment to tourism uh, and your interest in being here today. Um, so first we will, um, uh, Tina, was the meeting properly advertised? Uh, yes, Chairman Baer. It was advertised Thursday, April 7th in the Escambia Sun Press. Great, thank you. Sun Press. <laughs> Sun Press. Um, we will, uh, if you will now please call roll. Okay. Um, Jeff Bergosh. Here. David Bear. Here. Mary Hoxing. Here. Ronald Rivera. Here. Shirley Cronley. Here. James Reeves. Here. Mitesh Patel. Jared Moore, Casey Jones. Thank you. Do we have quorum? Yes, sir. We do. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Uh, first item on the agenda is review and approval of the February 8th, uh, 2022 meeting minutes. Move the approval of the minutes, Mr. Chairman. Second. Yeah. All right. We have a motion and a second. Uh, are there any objections? Uh, hearing no objections, please show the minutes approved. Uh, status of funds available, if the clerk of the court, Michael, you wanna come on down and give us an update, please? Good afternoon, everyone. Michael Davis, treasury manager. So I got good news. We are at our sixth con consecutive month of uh, record-breaking collections and, in, and for the year. But if we go, if we look at the amount of months consecutively we've had record breaking, it's full 12 months. Awesome. Every, for the last year, we've had a record breaking month, best of all time. So uh, we, we like that. Yeah, that's great news. <laughs> um, which will bring me to uh, the timing of the report, which would have been April 4th. Our total collections at that time was $6.8 million. And as of this morning, our April collections has been roughly around 290,000 as of this morning, which will bring us our total collections to date, as of today, at roughly $7.1 million. So a few of our highlights on the expenditure side is that for our community partners, we have Visa Pensacola has had about 3.4 million. Our, we have given Summerfest, Jazz Edition, 76,000. Our Blue Angel 75th anniversary reception was 10,000. And our African American Heritage has had 14.7 thousand as of today. And, and another big one is our base center transfers to date are 750,000 for the fiscal year. So our cash available before assigned and committed projects would be 15.7 million. Now I know we have other projects like the beach ball and other things like that, which of course would reduce it and maybe Stefan would have more information on that. Um, but the next thing I would, I would like to continue to talk about is our trends and why can't I zoom in? Okay, so here, here's some other numbers on our trends. We, as of March, we had 900, or sorry, as I said earlier today, we had $6.8 million for FY22 with our trend analysis ending at 4.2 million uh, at the same exact time comparison in 21, which would, at the 5% comparison, it would be a 61% increase and from a 4% comparison to be at 29.2%. So the total increase at a full 5% would be, we've at the first six months, we would have had $2.6 million more than last year. And if we just said four, four to four, it would have been a total of $1.2 million of additional tax collections. And it looks like this might be last month. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, sorry. I, okay. I was When I saw it, I was like, wait, that's not, those aren't the numbers. Um, 
So on the report that you sent out, um, yes, dated April fourth, it shows the March collections uh, for the, to that date. I guess were nine hundred forty nine thousand, and I know people the collectors are still remitting. Um, have you gotten an update on how much? that number would be? Do you have that information with you? Yeah, so the, okay. for the March, that would have been the ending number. Oh, that is? Yep. Is that 949? Right, the, the, uh, the 290,000 that I, that I mentioned earlier would have been the, the beginning of April, oh, from okay. April um, 1st through April 12th. So those, are those the num that are showing on this sheet, the March numbers, are those collected in February, reported in March? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Yep. Thank you. So, so far you said 289. Yeah, it's 289,000. Um, I, I just kind of wrote down the higher number, but it's rough, right around 290. And it, it, it's probably already higher than that since I uh, checked this morning. Is, when's the, the 20th is the date? The 20th, the, okay. depending if it falls on a, a weekend, it would be the next business day. Okay. or a holiday okay. well, but, we're yeah. hoping you collect another million dollars <laughs> yeah top of that too. and i will say from um experience what i see is once you start getting closer to the 18th 19th that's when people really start remitting so it'll that's when it skyrockets okay. all right does anybody have any questions for for michael no. stefan did you want to present anything you? Oh. okay great thank you thank you guys thank you michael All right, uh, next item on the agenda is the Pensacola Bay Center slash Visit Pensacola. Um, Michael and, and Darren, if you guys wanna come give an update on Sunbelt Conference. Absolutely, thank you, Council, for the opportunity to come to you today and give you an update on where we're at with Sunbelt. Uh, the event went great. Um, numbers were better than last year, obviously expected. Uh, we're still pulling our, our labor reports as, as that's increased with our, our number of, of labor and, and the challenges that we're all facing right now. Um, we, uh, we're probably going to be on par with what we did last year, even though with the increases, we had increase in concession sales, um, but increase in expenses and how what, the way the, uh, the LOA reads is how we work with the Sun Belt to make that happen. Uh, we're also engaged in conversation with the Sun Belt on the future. Uh, as well as with uh, county uh, staff uh, and commissioner. We're looking forward to setting up some meetings, to talk with, with everybody more on that front with Wes. Um, we actually have our corporate office in uh, operations this week, uh, meeting today and tomorrow, uh, looking at uh, basically doing an audit for our building for what has been requested by the Sun Belt. They basically provided a list of items that they would like to see done uh, going forward to do extensions. Um, there is a term in there with the LOA to do a, a two-year uh, two year term after 2025. Um, we engaged in that conversation during the conversa uh, tournament to see what would it take to go beyond. And uh, Ray's been involved with those conversations from Pensacola Sports. All of us uh, with uh, the commissioner, uh, the commissioner's vision would be to see what they want to see to modernize the building to come back. And again, the sense that they uh, play in world-class facilities on their campuses, they want to play in a world-class facility at their championship. Uh, and we have seen that they by far have been giving that experience with how they come in and deck it out. Um, so that's what we're working on with Sunbelt. Uh, we did see an increase in ticket sales. We did see an increase in attendance. Um, uh, basically about double uh, for each is what we did from last year to this year. Uh, the dribble drive on Sunday was phenomenal. I don't want to steal any thunder, um, but that was one of the best experiences that we had with all the kids there. Uh, the Sun Belt said that was the biggest um, attendance that they've had in that event itself within the event. So, and then without any, any more uh, questions, or do you have any questions for Sun Belt? For me, Any I know Darren, for the base Darren's for got Michael a lot Caps. more. And if you have yeah. more for base center, I can certainly do that. But I know your time is precious. Any questions, Council? No. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Great job. Darren? Um, just to add on top of, of what uh, Michael just shared, um, it was great that uh, be, by holding everything at the base center, we actually extended the number of days. So they started earlier on Wednesday, ran through Monday. Um, we had, uh, of course, 
uh, 12 schools from seven different states, so uh, 24 teams in total, and it was great this year that we had the bands and the cheer squads as well. And so we're gonna roll a video just for those of you that didn't get a chance, because I understand it also was a beautiful weekend and one of the first in a long time, so not everybody <laughs> took advantage of all their tickets. Uh, but we got some great, great footage to share, and so let's roll it. We're still updating a few pieces on that. There is one typo I noticed. So if you said, wow, 95 games, that's a lot of games. Well, that is not the correct number. It's more like 22 games. So we'll be correcting that. Uh, but the fact that uh, sold tickets doubled, uh, overall tickets distributed tripled uh, over last year uh, is significant. Uh, certainly we saw more uh, support locally as well. The dribble drive, 500 kids that came out and their parents that came out to participate that was was a great way to start the Fan Fest, and uh, that was on Saturday. The trolleys were busy. We had uh, four great local bars that served as host bars for the tournament, and the trolleys ran between downtown and uh, the Bay Center. We're excited next year. Uh, they're gonna start even earlier because while the Con Sun Belt Conference is dropping two teams, they're picking up four teams. So next year, there'll be 14 uh, men's and 14 women's teams playing. So I think we're even gonna be adding another day starting on Tuesday with, with play. So um, I'm up here talking about it, but Ray Palmer and his team are the ones that make it all happen. And so I don't know if you have anything else to, to add, Ray, but without Ray and, and his team making it all happen uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, we wouldn't be where we're at. And they're very excited about being in Pensacola. And I think like uh, Michael said, there's opportunities for uh, that relationship to extend for a number of years into the future. So. Great. That's all I have. Thanks. Thank That's you. great. Anybody have any questions? No? No. Thank you very much. Uh, so um, in my haste, I, real, I just realized I did not, uh, I passed on the agenda, the public forum, uh, which is very important to hear from the citizens. If we have any, I don't know if anyone signed up, but if there are any people in the audience who would wish to speak today, um, please come forward. Oh, oh, well then I shouldn't have brought it up. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, okay, so um, one other thing that I did also neglect when I was putting the agenda together was uh, an appropriation amendment for the unified budget. There are uh, some funds that were left over, wrote, that were collected last year that, um, that the unified budget was requesting to put on today's agenda. Uh, for appropriation and they need to come to us before they go to the county commission uh, and I would like if that's okay with everybody here after publishing this to put that on the agenda and have Darren come back up and speak to it if that's okay Does anybody object no objections All right, thank you this has to do with the fifth cent that when it was enacted that we had five months in the last fiscal year, seven months in this fiscal year. We just completed 12 months, so April 1st forward, that fifth cent is to be set aside. Um, but for the first 12 months, that was to be directed to the unified budget. So in sitting down with Stefan and reviewing the numbers, there's dollars from last year plus projections through March of this year comes up to that $1.3 million uh, appropriation uh, request. Mr. Chairman, we have that. I mean, we've collected it. We're at, we have it escrowed. For, I mean, somewhere. Stefan, <laughs> <laughs> because I, I do remember those conversations, but I also remember that after that first year of putting into that, we we're going to 
move that money aside because we're still thinking long term about the base center and what we're going to do with that. Yes, absolutely. And I believe this is the money that was collected that has not been appropriated yet. Correct. And it's uh, up to date, the, the amounts that are owed that we have collected so far. So the good thing is we're doing this right now. It's going to be the actual collections for the months that Visit Pensacola and Unified Budget are owed. So again, we're just, re we're just aligning all that to, to basically the direction that, that the board and the council has promised. So. That, is that when you were planning to do it, Stephen? I will have it on the next available agenda if, if I get a blessing today from the, the council. I think you will. Okay. Well, is, uh, I'll entertain a motion. I, I move that we do that and we add it to the next county commission meeting. Second. second. So we have a motion in, in two seconds. <laughs> uh, is there any discussion? Seeing none, uh, call for the vote. Those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Thank you. All right, uh, next item on the agenda uh, is the TDC Restricted Reserves Committee update. Ms. Cronley. Yeah. Uh, our, our group has met twice and we have gotten, received information from a number of the um, communities around looking at how they handle their reserves and so forth. Um, Stefan's been a great help to the committee. Uh, we will meet again on April the 27th um, and we are almost to a point that we think that we might can get um, something put together as far as to be able to present to this committee. Uh, we now know what kind of reserves that currently we ha have or what kind of dollars we have to possibly go to some reserves. And what we want to try to do is to um, make sure that reserves are um, able to be uh, used for the right position, used for tourism efforts, and then also be able to uh, not be able to be um, accessed without going through a number of steps, basically from this committee and then going to the Board of County Commissioners. So we're hopeful that it's something that the hoteliers and everybody will join together and be happy with. Any questions? Any questions? Great. Mr. Reeves? Who's on the committee? It is uh, Darren Schaefer with Visit Pensacola. Um, a representative from Pensacola Sports, uh, Laura, and now I'm forgetting Laura's last name. Yes, um, a representative from ACE, uh, then myself, and uh, David is not on the committee, he comes, and Tish Patel, TDC member. So, <clears throat> but anybody's how, how do we notice the meetings? On April the 20th, oh, they're advertised. They are advertised because they are a TTC it's, meeting. It's and a sunshine meeting. Yes. yes and on April 27th. That's 20th, all I wanted. Oh, okay. You're welcome to come <laughs> on April 27th. <laughs> okay. Are there any other questions? No. Uh, I'll just comment that the committee is uh, really working hard to try to wrap their arms help the TDC and the county wrap their arms around the spending of the tourist development tax, uh, really try to put together a plan uh, moving forward to try to, to grow tourism and develop it. Uh, we, are, we have a history of spending it when things come up, when they're great, uh, and that may or may not align with everything that we're doing. They may be needed and great programs, but trying to put together a plan uh, and put some controls in place, especially as this, this number, this collections continue to be record highs. Uh, the more and more money there is, the more um, spending there's going to be. And so really it needs to have a good plan. And I think this, this board and this committee is working hard to try to, to do that, to um, get the best return on the investment for these dollars that are collected. So. Uh, Anyway, thank you mm -hmm. for your, you and your, your team's effort for doing Thanks. that. All right, next item on the agenda is America's Cup. Uh, we have a couple of guest speakers, Collier Merrill and Tom Pace, if y'all would come on up. 
and introduce yourself, please. Good afternoon, Chairman, members. My name is Tom Pace, Jr. I'm a lifelong resident of Pensacola. Family goes back to 1757. I've been a lifelong waterman and sailor. I have competed in 36 countries around the world as a pro and amateur, and I'm the only Pensacola resident to compete in Olympic trials and as a professional sailor. I currently follow Jim Reeves' role. I'm Commodore Pensacola Yacht Club, and I'm engaged in all activities of the club, including bringing events to Pensacola. Uh, we're here today to talk about American Magic. That is an America's Cup team to participate in the America's Cup, which is the oldest trophy in the history of sport and predates the modern Olympics. On the short run in 2018, when Jim Reeves was Commodore, he tasked me with chairing the Kids National Championship, the Optimus Dinghy Nationals. We had 301 kids from 12 countries, and over the course of the 10-day period, according to Sally Garst at Pensacola Sports under Ray, we did a $1.64 million impact. We were second only that year to the Snowball Derby. Ray has schooled me a lot on what heads and beds means and the application of getting money to come into town and stay here. That's what sailing has done. This project with American Magic has been under some bit of secrecy. They have not wanted to announce their plans and hopes until things were solidified. And within the America's Cup, there is always a little bit of drama within that. If you win the event, you get to determine where the next event will be, and it's on an every three-year cycle. The America's Cup and trophy, frankly, is what the Super Bowl is, what the Borg Warner is at Indy, what all the, the major golf tournaments are combined. Back when this event first started, <clears throat> early 1800s, it was the, 10, or the 100 Guineas Cup, sorry, in England. And when the U.S. boat, the America, trounced everyone, the Queen looked up and saw their boat so far back and said, well, what's the prize for second? And the answer then got to be, Mum, I'm sorry, there is no second. That's been the lore of the America's Cup. There's no prize money for this. This is only about the honorability and the prestige of winning the hardest trophy in the world to attain. Teams routinely commit 100 to $150 million over a three-year pursuit to compete once every three years to bring that back to the host country. American Magic wishes to partner with Pensacola, and they want to do that not only for this cycle, but the next America's Cup cycle as well. Within that, what they bring to town are other events that we can't bring from a position of the Yacht Club. In the events that we do bring, we can replicate that kind of revenue, but the events that they're talking about, they bring in a level of dollars that will stay and spend and go for a long time. I have materials to present, if I may approach. What I've just passed to the, to the council <clears throat> is a summary of what the local impact is. The very first one on the short sheet that you'll see was that Optimus Nationals in 2018, which is a $1.64 million impact. That's the short two page. If you look straight to the bottom of that first page, the impact estimated from local economists, hotelers, restaurateurs of American Magic being here on the ground for this first step, which would be this May through July 23, uh, is coming up at $8.7 million. That's a pretty good impact for them to be here. That incorporates their housing, education for kids, what they would spend here in town. This is based on numbers of what they spent here in the past and what they've spent in other nations in prepping for this event. Beyond that, there's an additional amount of 6.9 in salaried money that is not completely within that with its discretionary monies. American Magic as well wants to pursue a future. Uh, the United States in 1984 medaled in gold or silver in each of the Olympic disciplines in sailing. Since then, we've fallen off the track. The last three Olympic cycles, we've had one medal, and that was a bronze in Brazil two cycles ago. American Magic would like to be a pipeline for sailing for cradle to professional and base it in Pensacola. We were told the other day in Collier's office, Pensacola Bay to them represents the single finest opportunity in North America. And by the fact that we have that on your seal, right, it's where we come for, for sailing. As you all know the history, right, this area was fought over by France, England, and Spain because of the deep water port. Same with Confederate and Union troops. In the 30s, some of our families were a part of the timber industry, and that set the world's spot price of timber. We had the tallest building in the state, right, Seville Tower, and the largest economic impact of any county. This is an opportunity to return Pensacola Bay to that prominence. And as I said to Nicole before, and, and uh, Ray and Collier as well, you don't, you don't recognize the economic generator that the bay is and the fact that you don't have to stripe it, air condition it, insurance, or keep it from catching on fire. It's right here for us to use and frankly puts us back in the world front of eyeballs for this capacity. 
uh, within that, Collier has a longer term approach of what this would mean to us, not just for this next three years, but then going forward for the next 15, which is the hope and goal of all of this. Uh, any questions we can direct after this? To your discretion. Questions? Anyone have any questions? Well, kind of a, so it's the New York Yacht Club, but they're going to train in Pensacola. So if, if we do this, are they going to have the, can they have the America's Cup here in Pensacola? <laughs> You know, it's a wonderful question. So, Come the, on, so, so yes. Yeah, so, the way this works, this goes to the deed of gift, a legal instrument. None of us could do an America's Cup campaign. It has to be through a yacht club, which was the order of the day in the 1800s. American Magic has partnered with New York Yacht Club not only for this next America's Cup, but the next one, and has been guaranteed it would remain in these kind of boats. In their world, that's rather specific. You could change the type of boat, and this venue may not be as attractive, but it will be for at least the next five years. Within that. They're not going to run back and forth to New York, and it's here. So that was the hard question when their director of sailing, Terry Hutchinson, approached me nine months ago. Could we defend here in Pensacola when they win? My first question was, not a chance could it be. They're doing it now in Barcelona, major international city. As Ray well pointed out, you know, we're not Formula One here. We may not even be NASCAR. We might be a puddle in a Georgia parking lot. Okay, but the functional reality is, is what the bay can do and what the port can do. Port Director Clark Merritt thinks it's possible. It does take significant investment, of which comes from a lot of ancillary sources, not only local. So to answer your question, sir, you bet. Okay. That's no. okay. Bye. Mr. Chairman and members, I appreciate y'all uh, hearing us out today. And first of all, congratulations on everything that's happened over the last few years and where we are today, and I appreciate that. Uh, <clears throat> so Tom Pace and I grew up together, Kenny Garden on. He went on to become a professional windsurfer. I went to drive trucks for my dad's lumber yard. <laughs> See who my son looks up to more. But, um, you know, they asked me to get, I don't know sailing at all. Uh, it still blows my mind if, for those of y'all that saw those when they trained here briefly last time, that in a 10 knot wind, the boat can go 50 knots. I just can't figure that out. Something, Benelli's principle or something, but it happens. And it's very exciting. Um, Commissioner, to answer your question, that's the first thing that kind of lights up my mind of, wow. And, and so I went out in my boat, which is a pontoon boat. Um, Shortly after I talked to him first, I took an engineer at works for me and we rode the bay and I said, you know, they say it's the perfect bay, 18 miles by five and not a reef and not this and that. And a lot of people are after them to train, you know, San Francisco, you can't train all the time. Key West military interferes. We have got a great bay. Every time I have somebody in my office, especially since this started, Tom just asked me to come to a meeting and it was like a cloak and dagger and a skiff room of quiet and I do want to apologize to anybody that this is the first time it's been talked about publicly of what their real plan is and I asked Tom I was in Mobile earlier driving back I said Tom are we still under this non-disclosure agreement because we've got to talk about it it's about to go public they're literally loading so that New Zealand had the uh, AC 36 I know all these terms now America's Cup 36 and that's where the America's Magic is, which was the defender for U.S. They're loading it as we speak. It might have already shipped out in a container ship for $1.4 million and shipping it to our port. Um, it'll take about 20 days to cross. Um, so they're coming back to train. And then the train here, the next uh, AC-37, is, as Tom said, is fall of 23? Mm, uh, October 23. And so they'll be here. They bring 100 people. It is, if you look on their website, it blows you away of all the, the sail makers, the engineers, the people that are involved with this. They won't all be here. That's a longer term play that I'm hoping we can do of build a facility and start building these boats. But my, I, I love having the magic. I hate looking out my window up here or across the street and the bay is empty every day. I mean, we should have sailboats all over the place. And I think the Yacht Club, which I'm not a member of, but, and like, again, I don't sail, but I love, I love the little boats and the children, they're doing that. I'm trying to get little Collier's 12 now to get in. I know Max does it. And um, it's, it's a unique program, and they're getting very diverse with what they're doing. Pensacola's a diverse town. Most ports are, you know, and we, as Tom said, we had this coveted port everybody's going after. 
And my singly, I say we, we lost our, you know, we were the tallest building in the state of Florida and t all these other ports started coming along. The dredge killed us. Once the dredge came along, we were no longer the, we had the natural deep water port. Then they, everybody had become a deep water port with the dredge, but I'm glad where we are. We just need to get more sailboats out there. And t to me and uh, Dr. Harper sitting behind me and we met with him, I said, Rick, if we could pay some money and, and you know, we're trying to help with their expenses, they're, they're spending about $100 million, 120, and they've asked for about 10 million over a three year period, uh, which we're eating elephant at different places. And that's why we're here before y'all to see if y'all get a bite of it. But the um, long term thing, and I'm glad they're here. They're, they're fun to be around. They, they, these, these sailors and they bring families in and they love being in Pensacola. Uh, but what can we do to light this bay up to get people aware of it? The Junior Olympics. One, one, one director of the America's Cup rules have given all the countries is we gotta get more diverse. We gotta get more people in the sailing. It is a expensive sport, but the juniors going down all the way down to what happens here uh, is what I'm trying to get. So I'm looking at the 20 year play of getting these races. Tom said they have to turn down some of the regattas now, but we get some of the higher end ones and they've got all kinds of ones that are part of the America's Cup races, but I'm talking about just the general regattas. And we have a few sailors here that are on that circuit, but I took some people out a couple years ago that came in. I didn't even know we were doing it. Somebody called me from New York, said the people are coming in, we take them around. 40 something countries and 100 and something, it was amazing how many people that are in that. And we need to get more of those. And that's, I've talked to Ray a little bit now that, I said, we just gotta start talking about this, where we are. And I've talked a little bit to visit uh, of, you know, the organization that's to be involved to get these people come, come in. And then there's a longer term picture that, not to violate sunshine, that maybe Triumph, uh, the chairman of those serve on that, of doing something at the port with a bigger, with a bigger facility, a boutique of making these sales and doing all this kind of stuff because it, it's a very, uh, BP money was meant for that. Get away from oil, get away, you know, you shouldn't be building roads that drive more oil, clean energy out there. So there's just a lot, it excited me as soon as I, I sat with lunch with Rick Harper and you, know, you could tell when he got it, like what can we do to set this up for the future t to get this in here and get the people to come in like the Sun Belt tournament and everything else that's happened here. I'm amazed. I know a lot of people have worked on what, what PSA has done, but that and the soccer and the stuff coming in here, just it, it's, it's great to see. I've said it many times that, you know, I think I moved in that building in the late 90s across the street when nobody was downtown. If you saw a tourist downtown, you would have taken a picture of them, I can tell you that, because they just were not here. They just were not here. And they're here, every cultural tourism and all this kind of stuff's going. But, my main thing is we, have, you know, that bay's there. It doesn't cost anything, as Tom said. And this is a good way, you know, a good campaign to get them in here. The city's committed money, and we're hoping that we can get, you know, so from you guys, we're looking at uh, a longer-term play, too, is also visit Florida and a, a few other places that I've talked to preliminary. But um, as I told them, it, it's time to get this, you know, we can't hold it anymore. There, there are gonna be a, there's going to be a big press announcement anyway when they when they land here and unload and those things if you haven't seen them when they go up on foil they shoot up out of the water and and just go and it's it, it's a crazy thing and they're, and they're you know these people train for three years so if you saw what happened before it was not a pleasant end for our our ship so how can we help that's Jim Mr. Reeves polite way of cutting me off and I appreciate that <laughs> um Oh, no, I'm not trying to cut you off. No, no, I, I agree. I just we need. You know, no, I, I appreciate that. So, so, so we're hoping. So, like I said, we're, we're raising them, um, and they, they've committed. I, I'm gonna be honest. You know, we, we, at that meeting, I was at the secret meeting with the class. I don't know why I'm here. I hope to sit in a membership committee. Um, <laughs> they're gonna start looking at my ID or something. But, you know, of of raising this money, of, of get them. They they went ahead had to make that decision to come before we could put all this in. So we said we would do our best over the next few years to raise money. So we're looking, um, you know, and I know you've got reserves, and I get that. We don't want to be a bunch of drunken sailors and throw all that money away. To me, this is what you're you're holding it for. Something like this opportunity doesn't come along that much. To really, and it's not a long term commitment. Once we can get the the bay on the map, so to speak. So, Mr. Reeves, uh, 
you know, we're, we're looking at uh, maybe half a million a year for three years from here. I don't know what y'all's, what are y'all looking at? Um, and maybe even, you know, we need more. Uh, maybe come back as people see what that is. Maybe next year talk about it again. Um, I'm open. I've never come before TDC. I think y'all do good work and spend this money. But that's kind of where we are. Be glad to, you know, talk it, talk it through. The city is committed. Um, I, I don't know if I can talk. They, they've come, they're helping with not just in-kind stuff, real money that their burn's going to be while they're here. And they, you know, it's a standalone. You know, Tom did, did a pretty good comparison, as Dr. Harper did, of in some notes he gave us, of just their 100 people here for three years. They're renting facilities. They're doing all this kind of stuff. How much is long-term or not and bed tax, I don't know. But that's not important to me, to me is what this, this will prove. It's like a campaign long-term without the pit bull that Visit Florida tried to do with <laughs> showing off there. This is a good, clean thing, family-oriented and very diverse. The Yacht Club's done a great job with their Satori program, a bit more people inclusive in the sailing, and that's where we are, so. So who else? <clears throat> in other words, just assume that we did a half million dollars a year since we're in the chips right now. Uh, who else? In other words, who's going to match? Who's going to, who's going to, we're going to go to Senator Broxson and say we want the state to come up with X. I mean, w Has the city committed to, to part of that? I think that was part of Part of the city had committed to some dollars. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. Rivera. They committed... I guess I can say somewhere between one and a half and two. Now, like I, I explained, over the three years. Yes, ma'am. And that and that is a uh, you know they're they rent in port facilities. It's a true in kind. It's not a you know we're going to give you a billboard on top of the building. It's money they were going to have to spend as part of their spend. They're spend <laughs> I tell you, yeah, part of the port. They're spending. There's two guys that own that, and I'm 100 percent 120 million dollars to race this. this is a, I met with a guy, I said, is, is there a Calcutta? Is there, give me something that you're trying to get back. He said, no, it's just, it's just prestige of it. And I guess it's, you know, now as a proud U.S. citizen, certainly a proud um, Pensacola resident, I certainly don't go nearly f far back like Tom does. Uh, but my first time I came here with my grandfather, Bernie Anderson, came with the Baghdad mill in the 20s. And I, that's why I've got this mural on the side of my building now. It, it's got the ships that he had commissioned. It, but that's off a real painting from 1890, just going back to what, what the port does. I'm ramming again. I can tell what Mr. Reeves rolls over. But, um, <laughs> Glazing so, over. So, and, and there's, there's, what I don't want to do is, because we do have some time, they, they have taken us at our word that we're going to work over the next few years to get this money. I, I don't want to go to the state without having our local, you know, now we've got, Pensacola committed. We've got, you know, see what, what y'all want to do on the, on the tourism side. But I, again, I'm not looking at, okay, they're spending this over the next three years, so it's worth this. I'm looking at, by doing this campaign, what, what's that going to turn this bay on that PSA then can take forward for the next 20, 30 years? Yeah. Sir, take it. Mm, um, if I could quote Rick. Um, this does come in several phases, sorry. So the first is this First America's Cup cycle. That event will be in October in 23. Win or lose, Councilman, they will come right back here to begin training for the 38th America's Cup. So their presence will be right back here. During those times, they will be bringing other regattas in here, which we bring more people in and out, in addition to engineers, sailmakers, designers, and those types of things. The longer picture of establishing a pipeline to train sailors in North America, frankly, in Pensacola, to use this as the venue, that brings in more repetitive dollars that are coming in to stay in our hotels and eat our food. And as Dr. Harper pointed out, this will be transformational for Pensacola. This is job creation through tourism. This is a Visit Florida play through the Shining Star, which is Visit Pensacola, and using the most notable sailing program in the world, America's Cup, through the best U.S. program to get those eyeballs to look at Pensacola. I mean, I've got a guy like Terry Hutchinson, and if 
you don't know sailing, this is kind of like looking at a Tom Brady. So this guy was a four-time collegiate All-American, two-time conference athlete of the year in his conference up in the Northeast. He is 15-time world champion, two-time Rolex award winner, and five America's Cups. He's one of the best guys on the planet. And it would be about like Bill Belichick uh, coming here going like, you know, guys, UWF Stadium, see this grass? There's no other grass like this in the country. We need to be here. And that's the nature of what these guys want to bring here. So any questions at all? Mr. Reeves? Ronnie? All right. Thank you, Council. We have oh, sorry. questions, yeah, Ronnie. Ronnie? Just to start with, can we get Dennis Connor here from uh, when he won in the 80s? So if this happens, if, if this happens up here, can we get Dennis Connor in Pensacola? Can somebody just call the guy yeah. and say, hey, Rivera wants to meet you? I, this has been a lifelong dream of mine. True story. Uh, uh, sir, sorry, I, I, I believe we can make that happen. <laughs> just um, teasing. <laughs> but, I, but I can certainly get you an invitation uh, to meet, or I can get you in to see multiple current America's Cup sailors uh, in once of previous years. In fact, with that in mind, one of the other things we're doing at the Yacht Club, Mr. Reeves knows this, we're reshaping the Junior Olympic format, and Pensacola Sports is going to be actively involved, but what we're doing, this is a demonstration event for three days to bring performance sailing to more kids. This isn't just the square blunt nose boat that'll go five miles an hour. These are boats at hydrofoil that do what this America's Cup platform does. And within that, um, we have Paul Kayard, former America's Cup sailor, also uh, uh, Olympic medalist as well. He just missed a medal, but Olympic sailor as well. Uh, they are using Pensacola to roll out this format for the country, and we're leading that as well. Uh, and there is a lot of synergy coming in with that. But, sir, any Ameris Cup veteran you'd like to meet, we can make that happen. <laughs> Mr. Reeves? Um, if we continue the trend that we just heard, and just hypothetically, let's say we said we're going to put a half million dollars for three years. Uh, how would that affect our other program? In other words, if we're doing really, really good and we can afford it, and then next year we can't afford it because the trend is the other way, uh, you know, it, uh, do we have enough spirit to at least get it going uh, with the idea that if we got the money, we'll do it, and if we back it off, we might have to go to 350, you know? <laughs> Shirley? One of the things, it sounds like a great program, and I applaud you for bringing it. One of the things I would suggest is this, our committee with the reserve restriction funds that we are working at, I would suggest that uh, we're trying to come up with a plan of really actually how many dollars we have available and looking at some of the needs that we know exist, like uh, improvements to the Bay Center and whatever. I would suggest that we bring and hopefully get adopted this uh, program that we want to start following on restricted funds and so forth and then see how we can get those dollars out of what the budget what the numbers are that we have mm -hmm. it would be my suggestion I think now we know what your needs are and what you're looking for and I think what we need to do then is try to work toward that but I would suggest to this group that we don't do anything right today because I don't think we can until we know kind of what our plan is going to be. And we're hoping to have that plan together within a month. We will call, I would guess, another TDC meeting or we would um, do it presented on our next TDC meeting. And then at that point in time, I would think we might could discuss it, would be my suggestion. I do have a question. Is, will this fall under the guise of sort of advertising and what we really, you know, what statutorily we're supposed to be doing here? That's kind of part of where I'm at too, but I'm sure you guys talked me through that pretty easily. Yes, I think it, I think it does. I mean, from my understanding of the, the statute, I believe it would comply with the marketing piece of it and placemaking for driving tourism. It's tourism development. Okay. I, mean, I mean, it would fall under not maybe the first through three cents, but the fourth and fifth cent and under the, the county's plan. And, and, and I think um, following Mr. Revere, they, they have, you know, 
it's not a lot of, you know, it's, it's not going to be like plastic billboards everywhere, but they, they will give us sales space. They want us to be that representative. Uh, we, and, you know, we, again, they're, they're, they're loading up. They had to make a decision. Sure. We kind of said we're going to do our best. If you kind of give us a nod that I'm not going to get the call. I know who's going to get this call from Terry. I don't talk to the, I've met with them a couple times, but they, they on Tom every day about where we are. And I said, just tell them to come on. Because they had, they could either train in New Zealand and then go to the, depending on where the race, the current holder, which is New Zealand, decides Northern Hemisphere, Southern, this has been, it's a jockeying back and forth where it's going to go. Now they know it is going to Spain and where they're going to train, but they've committed to move it all back here and train. We just, um, there's some ancillary pieces that we need to, uh, we need to give them assurances. So I, I think y'all are in favor of it. You just want to see where your money is. Is that is that true? My thought. Yeah. Yeah. So to answer, I guess Mr. Reeves's question, where what happens if tourism takes a dive next year or future years? I know currently we have reserves. We have money in the fund. It's not restricted in any way, other than what is encumbered. Um, and so that's what this committee is working on, trying to get its arms around and try to put together like what's a marketing restriction fund mm -hmm. in case we have another oil spill or another pandemic or some crazy instance that causes our tourism to dry up overnight uh, so that we can continue the progress and trying to get people to come here uh, and also for public facilities you know there's a need for public facilities as well so we're we're looking the committee is talking about those two different items and what the need will be to build the public facilities because that's going to be a continual you know need i mean with the bay center and if there's there's still talks of uh sports complexes etc cetera, etc cetera, whatever that may be um that the the tourist development tax can support we we've got to build that fund and continue to grow it uh but also put money into the emergency fund marketing fund so that we have that uh, and then we'll know what's what's left over uh, that's unrestricted, un sort of. And by the way, this board will make that recommendation to the board of county commissioners, who will then have to approve that as a plan. Uh, but then then we'll know what funds are available as well after that. Um, I currently we're the way we keep chugging along in our collections. We budget pretty conser relatively conservatively, and we and for the last. Up until 2020, we collected more than we budgeted. Right. Uh, 2021, we budgeted $10 million and we collected $17 million. <laughs> Part of that was the fifth cent that we, you know, the county levied halfway through the year. But uh, still, it, and this year we're currently 25 to 30% over just in the first four cents. But, I mean, it's we're tracking way above. So we know the funds are there. But this could turn around any day. So uh, I, I guess one of the things that we should be considering is do we, and I don't know that we've done it other than the Naval Aviation Museum as multi-year commitments. Uh, it could be a one-year commitment with a promise to review it the next year. And if it's, you know, if you can show some sort of um, performance, uh, you know, an ROI for that investment, then we could come back and it could be another half, if it's a half a million to start, it could be another half a million or it could be even greater if you show a greater return. And this board makes that recommendation. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I would just like to suggest that, I mean, it's very exciting. It, it sounds like something that is the perfect use of these, of these funds. But I would, I would strongly recommend that you bring this before the board of county commissioners. We have a meeting this Thursday. If you could bring this presentation, I'll add it as a chairman. I'll add it to our agenda for the committee of the whole. You bring this presentation. You've got to socialize it with my counterparts on the board because there's a lot of different agendas and a lot of different ways that folks want to spend these dollars, of course and with limited funds but um it sounds very exciting but is there a way that you could come uh, at nine o'clock on thursday and present this at our border county commissioners committee the whole yes yes sir thank you mr uh commissioner it, and i have nothing but respect for shirley carnally because of everything she's done over the years and i've watched her and, and met with her and everything with sports and i don't want to uh, beat the dead horse it, instead of a a multi-year commitment is there a way we can get a commitment today though on the half a million or is that what you're trying to table as well only i know they're waiting to hear from him and and uh they'll, they'll be here there's going to be a big uh 
That's why I said, Tom, we're just going to let it out. It's still, it's still going to be big. They're going to do a big press thing when, uh, they, when they hit the port in May. My, my suggestion, Mr. Chairman, for consideration by the sport, I, I like the idea of, you know, it doesn't matter exactly what we do. We've got to have buy-in by the county commission. My suggestion, since... Uh, Shirley's committee meets on the 27th. My suggestion would be that we suggest positively consideration of this request, but that they ad address it at that subcommittee. Uh, for a recommendation, and at the same time, they can go ahead and move to the county commission. You know how the county commission is. They may just give them the 500000 not even more. Than, <laughs> I wouldn't count on that, Jim. Well, I, count on I, I was suggested to do that, but I wouldn't. I mean, I respect you all what you all do. And, that, uh, and, and Mr. Chairman, I mean, we could always do a letter of support, even if we didn't put a dollar amount attached to it today, uh, and, and send that letter of support if we wanted to go that route uh, to the county commission and let them know at least we're in support, but we're working through the process of, of just sort of developing a long-term plan. Uh, and, and this is, it, it actually came at a good time because that long-term plan will have to include this now to some degree. So we could at least, deliver a letter of support to some degree, if, if I'm not mistaken. And, and we'd love to get, you know, especially with y'all's blessing, we'll go before the commission um, Thursday. Yeah, that would be great. I'll put you on the agenda for sure. Mm -hmm. He'll put you on the agenda. <laughs> the um, suggestion would be that you take sailing lessons. <laughs> hey, listen, I, I studied Join in the depth of what light air is. Now I know what light air is. That is. But that's good. If you're behind in a race, you want light air because the first guy. If everybody has good wind, nobody's going to mess up. It's how to do it when you don't have much wind, <laughs> apparently. So we're not, no motion today then, uh, just to support. And so we have. Why can't we support that? The half a million? The request today? I mean, I'll entertain a motion if somebody wants to make one. If we didn't do a long term, if we just went for the half a million, then we. Okay, okay, but from the where, mayor, Mr. Chairman, from which from which penny, from where? Well, it would got to be very specific. It would have to come from the third, uh, the fourth or fifth penny. That I, I don't see it coming. Oh, you mean from the stuff we're going to allocate? That's currently in the. Okay. Well, there's, I don't know exactly what all is getting allocated outside of the fifth cent. Because the fifth cent after that first twelve months is spoken for. Correct. Yeah. So, I mean, if you got, I mean, Mrs. Cronley, if there's some area where you think it might be appropriate, we could put a stake in the ground. I'd be happy to make the motion because I think this is gigantic for Pensacola. It's huge. But I'd like to know where you. But, but don't we have enough excess funds he, to fund he, this? If, he, should yes, that be something that we want to do? He, he, we have a lot of funds in the fund 108. I'm not exactly sure what is first penny, second penny, third, and under the statute, they have different authoriz different authorizations on what they may be spent on. And I don't believe the first through three cents can be spent on something like this. They can be spent on sports complexes and on convention centers uh, and beach renourishment and, and other things, but I'm not sure they can be spent. I'm not, I don't know. They may be, I don't know. Well, Stefan's coming yeah, to the podium. Do those have to be Stephen, public facilities? Public that's the question, facilities. do those have to be public facilities? Well, well that's, I guess another question because is what- Because if it doesn't have to be, and I didn't mean to interrupt you, Mr. Chairman, but if it doesn't have to be a public facility and now all of a sudden you're talking about a facility to house something uh, for this venue, now we're starting to talk a different language on one through three all of a sudden. Go ahead. Stephan, please. Correct. If, if this is going to be some type of facility, then yes, it, it's going to be very specific to, to certain pennies and the fourth and fifth cent would certainly be the ones that you would consider to do that. Um, as far as the carry forward is concerned, 
excuse me, my glasses were misbehaving. They're not, co not cooperating. Um, we've got uh, a 2.8 available in the carry forward, 2.8 million that is, in the fourth cent. Um, that, that's come forward if that was something that, that the council would like to entertain. But also, just something else to consider. Again, we, we continue to grow um, each year. So just it, budget it, it. Absolutely. Just budget it. Yeah. Exactly. You could, yeah. out of the next future and we'll, and we'll, year. It. we'll budget it and we'll get there. Yeah. Correct. You could budget it outright just as part mm -hmm. of the recurring dollars if you wanted to take that approach as well. So we do have a uh, TDC budget workshop. Well, that's the next item on the agenda. We'll get to that in a moment, but it's currently scheduling for May 17th. So we can have this discussion then and bring but, it. But why can't we yeah. assign it? Oh, we can. To Shirley's committee because of the early date and she's dealing with reserves and what have you. And you know, that would give them the opportunity. It may not be three years of a half million dollars, right. but we certainly could consider. I'm fine with that. Uh, yep. Well, I'd move that we approach in a positive way the request <laughs> and that it be assigned to the Shirley subcommittee for a recommendation back to this board. Keep in mind, I made seven motions since I've been on the board, <laughs> and none of them have ever passed. You had the fifth set. Okay, Jim, just because you said that, I'll second that motion. <laughs> We've got two okay. votes over here. You got the motion? I would. I Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? What, what I was trying to bring up about the May 17th budget workshop is that the committee on the 27th, April 27th, discuss it, then bring it back to our budget workshop meeting so we can have that as part of our discussion of our, of our budget because this is an expenditure we're talking about. Uh, we can bring it back to the TDC budget workshop meeting to then present at our next TDC meeting as possible budget item if it moves forward. Mr. I'd be happy to amend it. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, real yes, quick. And, and does that include a letter of support moving forward? We're going to say, hey, we are going to support something moving forward. Because I, 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 in a lot of ways, I understand Collier's position I can go with that, here. too. I, I can know, understand Collier's I'm positioning. I mean, you don't walk out the door without something to some degree of some support. But I, I, It's him I'm worried about because they, I, they – that's him. why I, was, I wasn't sure the motion there, Mr. – so that you're approving half a million for this year, but that we have to – for future funding, we're not committing to that. And, and that's fine. I think this will prove itself on its merit, but you, you'll commit half a million this year and then – We'll see how the budget looks and how they perform. I mean, in a month from now, they're going to be, or a little over a month, 21-day crossing. They'll be doing a big press thing at the port and bringing facilities in. So if we can go back with that, that's great with me, and then prove themselves. Hopefully, I'll be back to work by then. That was your motion, Mr. Uh, was Reeves? that the motion? <coughs> was that your motion? Should I just recraft his motion? Yes. <laughs> so the, the motion, I mean, that we're, we walk out. I don't, I, I don't want to short circuit, but, but if we get half a million today and then we'll come back at the budget, see how that looks, and if they before, I mean, quite frankly. And, and understand, we will make the recommendation for a half million. Turn on your mic. We'll make the recommendation for a half million, but when you go to the Board of County Commissioners, that's who ultimately makes the right. decision. That's why it's so critically right. important. Yes, you have our total support. Right, yes. totally. Right. right. Yes. That's, that's fabulous. But you got to get, you got to count to three on the board. Yes. So you got to come Thursday and, you we, know. We will yeah. be there. And that's again, critically it, you know, important. Yes, sir. So, so, you, so, yeah, what? Motion on the table. So the motion on the floor is that we approve. I'm restating. Uh, or why don't you restate yeah. it? Here we go. Restate yeah. it, Jim. No, no. <laughs> I can. I'll, I'll, I'll increase it. Yeah, no, no, no. Here we're, goes Jim. Uh, Jim, you can restate it. You go ahead. No, no, please. Go ahead. Uh, my motion is that we approve the recommendation for a half million dollars for this project 
we assign that issue to Shirley's committee on April the 27th, who in turn brings it to the meeting on, on May 17th. And that, to determine how the, where we get the money from, okay? And finally, we support this initiative by a letter to the county commission that says we support it and we're going to find the money somewhere. All right, my second stands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have the motion and a second. Any further discussion? When no? do I have to deliver Dennis Connor? <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> Wait for the vote. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, call vote. Those in favor, raise your hand, signaling aye. Aye. Those and that's unanimous. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Thank you, committee. Uh, I want to thank Visit Pensacola again for everything. What a tough time we've come through for the, last, the world. And everybody's kind of Just, stuck together, and it's been great, and appreciate it. Yep. Thank you both. We appreciate you guys bringing that to us. It's exciting. All right, so next item on the agenda is the TDC budget workshop. Uh, I just wanted to get that scheduled. Um, May 17th, um, we have a our next meeting, I have to look at my calendar, second Tuesday in June. Our next scheduled meeting is the 14th um, TDC meeting. Uh, and I'd like to have that budget workshop done prior so that we can um, take action to recommend to the Board of County Commission and before they start having their county work budget workshops, uh, a proposed budget for TDC, T, for the TDT. So um, just wanted to get that on the calendar, May 17th at 3 p.m. for everybody. That will be in the same room, yes. All right. Uh, and next item is just closing remarks. Um, I was going to start to my left, but Ronnie got up and left. So we can start to the right. Uh, Commissioner, do you want to just closing remarks about the meeting? and? Um, thank else? you. I think it was productive. Big news today, though. You guys broke some really big news. I'm excited to see how that project goes forward, and I look forward to you bringing it Thursday morning to my counterparts on the board. I think they'll be receptive. You have a minute after this. Please, come on. Oh, you mean after this? After this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Reeves, any closing remarks? I am so happy that one motion that I made passed. <laughs> and I'm really happy for you too, Jim. <laughs> Is that your closing remark? <laughs> No, I'm a sailor, so I'm thrilled about this. I think this is going to be a, just transformational for our community. So thank you. Shirley? Um, yeah, I agree with my counterparts. It's an exciting event, but also the other things that the other entities are doing at the Civic Center and Pensacola Sports visit. Thank you all for your hard work because it's paying off. Yeah, I want to thank everybody here um, for all the work they're doing, um, the outside agencies, the unified budget, the county. Uh, thank you for all the, the continued work in growing our tourism. Uh, it makes our, our county a better place to live and a much better place to visit. So thank you for everything you do. Thank you, council members, uh, for being here today and committing. Ronnie, if you want to say something from the bathroom or wherever you are, <laughs> wherever you went, uh, nothing further. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Yeah, that's